In a recent video, I combined the Luxata Little Bug inspired stove with my vegetable steamer stove, and I came up with something that appeared to be very successful. I also talked in that video about combining the Luxata Little Bug inspired stove with a smaller vegetable steamer using wood pellets. Well, today we're going to try that out. Let's see how this works. All right, so uh, the ground I'm working on right now is frozen, but on top of that is just a whole lot of wet, wet, wetness. And what I found using these little stoves is that um, it's okay to set it right down on the ground as far as safety is concerned, but if I'm setting it on ice or frozen ground, that after this thing starts to get hot, what happens is the ground starts to melt and these legs start to sink in. Now, okay, if they sink in at an even rate, but sometimes what happens is, is it'll sink in at a bit of an angle and then all of a sudden my water wants to tip over. So what I'm going to do and what I would recommend if you have something to, that you can use is a piece of tin foil, piece of heavy aluminum foil, or in this case I'm going to be using a piece of aluminum flashing. Now this piece of aluminum flashing I cut specifically to carry with my little bug inspired stove because as I've pointed out there is no base in this so I made this that I could use it on the ground like this on top of the uh, piece of flashing that I have but today what I'm going to use or do is just put the the uh, vegetable steamer on top of this and uh, but not protect the ground, but keep the thing from, from melting into the ground. So I'm going to open this up. I have a cup and a half, approximately, of wood pellets here, hardwood pellets, that I'm going to put in. I think a cup and a half is plenty for this test. And I've just got some inexpensive fire starter that I'm going to spread around and kind of cover up as the fire gets going a little bit. This is what I'm going to light the fire with. Um, you know, what I've used in the past works well is gel alcohol, liquid alcohol, hand sanitizer. You know, any of those things work to get pellets going. Uh, I like using this only because, well, I've got a lot of it i got to use up. But that's maybe one reason for doing so. But I can distribute it around. It does take a few minutes for pellets to get going. But uh, once they get going, of course, then they're going good. So let's just get this started. Something with a very fine edge on it. Once I get one piece lit, I can light some other pieces off of it. And as soon as I get a few of these pieces of fire starter lit and pushed into the pellets, I think I need a little stick for this, then I will close this up and we'll put the little bug on top of it. So what I'm hoping will happen, like I'm, you can use these things wide open like this and they will work fine. Now you, this one you'd need a grate or a tripod or something on top of it that you can uh, suspend your pot over. We talked about that in previous videos about using these vegetable steamers. Uh, this For this one I'm going to close it right up. What I'm hoping will happen is not only does it will oxygen get in all the way around it, of course, but it will act as a focuser, kind of pushing the flame towards the center and upwards, giving it more of a, a jetting effect, if you will. That should be enhanced by the use of the Little Bug inspired stove because the ports on the outside should add to the airflow that runs up the sides of the leaves of the vegetable steamer. At least that's my theory. And the height will draw it like a chimney does. So let's just set this on and see what happens. Now, the pellets are not really engaged yet at all. Well, they're starting to be. I'm looking down inside, and I'll give you a better view when, once it really gets going. But already, I can see that the flame is reaching higher than it normally would. I wonder if I can get that off without burning myself. Yeah, there is a difference. Already there's a difference. Once I put that on, the chimney effect kicks in and the flames start to really reach up. So my hope is that this will work for the pellets. My concern when using pellets is, is that they're a really good fuel, but the heat seems to stay relatively close to the bottom. I mean, they don't, they don't flame up a lot. They're a steady burning fuel, but they don't cause a high fire, if that makes any sense. All right, it looks like my pellets may be starting to engage a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, as the pellets engage, I have some water with some uh, soup in it that I'm going to be putting on for my lunch. But I'm going to wait until the pellets are well engaged. I'll give you a view of that, and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, how cool is that? 
I wondered if this would happen, but uh, I'm so pleased to see it. It looks like a wood gas stove. Geez, I'm not sure it isn't producing wood gas, pyrolyzation. Well, it does. That's how, how wood burns, burns, of course. But uh, what I thought I was looking at is just secondary combustion, air being drawn in through the holes all the way around the outside of the vegetable steamer. But this may actually be working as a wood gas stove. In any case, look at the, that flame pattern. That's producing a straight up jet of flame that's just like a rocket stove. It's very clean, there's no smoke. Now wood pellets don't produce a lot of smoke anyway. All right, so this is exactly what I had hoped to see and even better than I had hoped. This is producing a good flame, a good hot cooking flame that I better get my pot on and make some use of. I do have a bit of a timer going now just to give an idea how long these a cup and a half of pellets is going to last like this. But uh, yeah, let me get my pot on and I'm going to cook up my lunch and we'll have a few more words to say about this. So this is 20 minutes later after I lit and got the fire going. You can see there's still a lot of red hot coals and a lot of heat being produced down there, but there's no active flame. I Yes, I could probably grill something over that. I, I, my experience has been with pellets is once they get to this point, it does not last a whole lot longer, but uh, there's still a lot of heat producing. That's 20 minutes after I lit it on a cup and a half of pellets. I think that's a very good performance. So my... Uh, Pellets are all burnt out, and there's the stove afterwards. And I didn't put water on right away. Maybe I should have put water on right away to make my coffee. But I have my little fancy feast stove right here that I can use to quickly get myself some, about a cup or 10 ounces or so of water for coffee. And I thought I would just share with you very quickly um, how I use the fancy feast with the Lixada little bug or the the uh, vegetable steamer. So the vegetable steamer could be used as a windscreen by simply dropping that down inside. Because this has an integrated pot stand, the stove that is, you don't have to have any other type of stand. And that will go on just nicely and it gives a little bit of protection and kind of focuses the flame around the base of the stove or right base of the pot. Mind you, any wind is still going to rub some of the some of the heat away from the pot itself, but that's true about any pot that doesn't have a completely encircling windscreen around it. So that's one way of doing it. I tried this with the Lixada little bug on top. Actually it might work. I wasn't quite sure if it would. The with this, as you put the little bug on it starts to close in a little bit around the stove. That also means that the sides, the leaves of the vegetable steamers uh, start to lower down. They're still slightly higher than the alcohol stove is, so it doesn't work as well if you don't have something directly on top of, the, on top of this type of alcohol stove. But I'm thinking it would work though. I probably could use it like that right on top. Looks to be plenty stable. I'm not afraid that the leaves are going to close in any further and if they did in fact it might actually be better you know i may try this if i don't try it today i'll try it another time but that actually looks like it might work out quite well and this will act as a windscreen why don't we do exactly that <laughs> let me first i'll show you what it was i was going to do which was simply this light it put this around the outside Drop this down on top, and you've got a great windscreen with plenty of ventilation for the alcohol stove at the bottom. Just enough exhaust area for alcohol for the, the uh, heat to rise around the sides of the pot. And that was, that was what I was going to do. That works. I know that works because I've done that before. Let's try this. See if this does anything to make it any... I don't want to close it in so much that it you know comes in contact with the flames. And that won't. But uh, yeah, this does. This looks like it might be something interesting. Okay, put some alcohol in. But uh, a little bit more than an ounce. These little bottles hold two ounces, so I need a little bit more than that. Takes a second for that to soak up the side of the wick. Yep, going. It, now the wick will have to pull up more alcohol and it will move around the outside of the wick. But this looks, you know, that may work really well. Put this on the outside of it. And put this down inside. 
Now I have to keep an eye on it to make sure, because what can, can happen is, one, I can cut off all the oxygen supply and that would, would not be good. It'll just go out. Alternatively though, what can happen with a small alcohol stove like this is, the alcohol itself will superheat and start to boil inside of the alcohol inside of its chamber and it will start to bubble up and then I could get alcohol pouring out over the side. I do have small vent holes in the stand part of the stove as you, you need to have for that reason but still this could concentrate too much heat around the alcohol stove so I'll keep an eye on this but otherwise I'm just bringing some water on for coffee. All right that worked better than I had expected. I was actually quite pleased and surprised when I saw what looked like wood, wood gasification taking place inside of the stove. I'm not sure that it was. Certainly pyrolysis was taking effect. I couldn't see active flames down inside of the pellets, but you could see all that secondary combustion taking place and the height the flame was reaching and the smokeless nature of it. Uh, it looked good to me. It looked pretty much like wood gasification, but uh, more tests are probably needed to, to prove that out. You know, I've only tried this with pellets so far, and uh, I haven't tried actually loading wood in, but I have no reason to think why this wouldn't work with a load as wood as well. The vegetable steamer doesn't open up a whole lot inside of here, so it wouldn't be able to get a whole lot of wood in, but I, you know, the way this works so efficiently, I don't know how much wood you'd actually have to put in there, as long as you could occasionally add a few more sticks in as you went along. And I think that would be easy enough to do. So, this is kind of an interesting thing. I'm, I'm going to look around to see if there are any cans, large soup cans or juice cans or something that are the same diameter as the Luxato Little Bug inspired stove to see if we can't make this a true DIY that had no purchased, well, other than thrift store finds, but no uh, commercially made stove components to go with it. I suppose that would add to the bulk. I mean, seriously, this thing folds down to nothing, weighs nothing, and that gives you the option of using it without any anything underneath it. Gives you the option of using it as a windscreen. So it's this combination I like, but I am going to experiment a little bit more and see if I can't find something else that might actually be used instead of the looks at a little bug. Yeah, 20 minutes on a cup and a half of pellets. High performance, <laughs> little combination stove. Hard to beat. If you have one of these looks at a little bugs, get out and find yourself a couple of, of the vegetable steamers, the large size and the small size. I think you'll be pleased with the performance you get out of the two and then when you put them together. All right, I have a lot more stoves at home that I'm going to bring out to the woods and try at some point. So I've got a lot of testing left to do and a lot of things I can bring to you. If you have any questions on this combination, the other combination of this stove with the larger vegetable steamer, any suggestions that you would like to see me try, please put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.